Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com. Today I'm going to be presenting part four of my four-part series on Google Drive for 2013. This video is going to be on file organization and management within Google Drive. Part one covered an introduction to Google Drive, talked about uploading some files. Part two talked about actual document creation within Google Docs and Google Drive. And part three talked about sharing both with other Google Docs users and sharing files with people who don't use Google Docs. So there probably will be a few other chapters that can get added on to this series throughout the next year. Uh, but for the most part, these four videos should give you a very good overview of how to use Google Drive and Google Docs with the new interface that was released at about midway through 2012. So I hope it helps and enjoy. Okay, so here we are in my Google Docs account, and you'll notice that we've got a list of documents that we've created throughout this video series. And by the way, all the other videos in the series are linked in the description below if you want to access those different uh, parts of the series. But if you've watched the other videos, you'll know that I've mentioned that I always work from this activity section of my Google Docs. And if you haven't, uh, if you don't see this section on the left side of your Google Docs, you probably see this little more drop down. And if you click on that, you'll then see the activity section. And the way I like to think about it is the activity section is like your Google Docs inbox. Every file that you create and every file that is shared with you will show up in this activity section. Now, it doesn't have to stay there forever. Uh, this section is always sorted by last modified. There's no way to change how these files are sorted from the activity section. When we take a look at a different location here in Google Drive in a little bit, I'll show you how you can sort by some other different factors. Uh, but from activity, it's always by last modified. So what ends up happening is um, maybe I create this document, Call of Duty, and I share it with somebody, and I don't make any changes to it. I just leave it as is. But if they make a change to it, it's going to jump to the top of my list because it's been modified uh, by somebody else and it was my last modified document. Now as soon as another document is modified after that one, it'll jump above this one. So this list kind of jumps around a little bit, but it's definitely a good place um, to take a look at all the activity that's going on within Google Drive, hence the reason it's called Activity List, because once you start collaborating with other people, you can see what everybody else is doing. You'll notice in this last modified section over here, it says my name and the date that I last modified this document. But if I had a shared document and somebody else modified it, it would have their name and it would say when they modified it. If one of these documents was modified today, it would actually have the time that it was modified as well. Um, so that's your activity list. Now another place that I'd like to show you is this all items list. And these lists as of right now are almost exactly the same. There is a slight difference. If I click on all items, you'll notice that my list changes a little bit. I have two folders in here. Okay, so that's the main difference right off the bat is that activity list does not show folders, it just shows documents and files. The all items list actually shows your folders. Okay, so here's a folder I created yesterday called shared, and then here's a folder that I created from another one of my Google accounts. You can see the owner is a different name, and I shared it with myself. Um, and as of right now, the only place I see this folder is in my all items list. However, I'll show you how to change that here in a minute. But I want to show you something that's pretty important. And if you use Gmail, you'll really understand this uh, probably a little bit better. But um, the activity in the all items list, so far the only difference we've seen is that folders are listed in all items. But if that's the only difference, is there really a point of having two completely separate lists for virtually the same list of items? And the answer is no. But there's another essential difference in this activity list that I'd like to show you. I mentioned this is your inbox. Well, in your inbox in Gmail or in any mail account, you can take messages out of your inbox, yet still have them in your email account. Well, you can do the same thing in Google Docs. You can take documents out of this activity list so you don't see them every single day, yet still have access to them if you really need access. So I've got this call of duty dot doc. This is a word format file. I don't need the word format one. I have the Google Docs format that I'm going to continue to work on, but I want to leave this in my Google Docs account just in case I need it at some point in the future, but I don't need it in my activity list. So all I need to do is right click on it and you'll notice I have this option that says don't show an activity list. Like I said, if you're a Gmail user this will make a lot of sense because this is essentially the same thing as archiving an email. When you archive an email in Gmail, it goes out of your inbox yet it stays in your all mail folder. If I say don't show an activity list to an item in Google Docs, 
it disappeared from my activity list. However, if I go to my all items list, there it is. Okay. Now the other big thing, the easiest way to find files in Google Drive, um, I think it's the easiest way to find emails in Gmail, is search. So I hid this item from my activity list. I'm not going to see it unless I go to all items, but your all items is always going to have every single item within your Google Drive account. So there's no way to take an item out of all items yet still keep it elsewhere. So as you use Google Docs, this all items list is going to get huge. So it's not going to be very convenient for you to just go and, and browse through that section. So instead of going to my all items list to find the Call of Duty document, I'm just going to type call. All I have to do is type call. I could type call of duty, but call works. You can see two documents pop up. If I want to see all the results for call, I can just hit search docs. Here are my results. So here's my document, the word format call of duty document. It's no longer being displayed on my activity list. However, when I search for it, I can find it. Or if I go to my all items, I can find it. So I tend to keep items in my activity list that I want to see the, the updates on. Maybe I'm not even editing these files, but I want to know when somebody else edits them. That way, when somebody edits it, it will drop to the top of my activity list. Okay, it will jump to the top of my activity list. Um, so that's really the difference between activity and all items. Try and keep your activity list pretty organized. Try and get the stuff out of there that you don't need to see updates on all the time. Now, a couple other things I want to show you in a minute here. We're going to create some folders, which will definitely add some organization to your Google Drive. But I want to go back to this all items list for a quick second here. And I want to show you that in this list up here at the top right, we do have the option to sort. So by default, it is sorted by last modified. But I could sort by title, which obviously is alphabetically. Or I could sort by when it was last edited by me or opened by me or the size of the file quota used. So you can see this is my largest file. It's you know, it's a video file, so it's, it's a little bit bigger than the others. So you do have some sort options here in the all items list. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about creating a folder here in Google Drive. Uh, generally speaking, I always work from this activity list, so I'm just going to go back to activity. And where folders are going to appear is under this My Drive section. You'll see I have one folder called Shared that we created in an earlier video in this series. And I quickly went over it and I told you I'd come back to that in this video, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's go over creating a folder in a little bit more depth here. So to create a folder, I'm going to go up to the big red Create button, just like creating a document, and I'm going to select Folder. And I can call this folder whatever I want to call it. I'll just call this Test Folder. And then I can hit Create. So now I have another folder over here listed under my drive called test folder and I can go ahead and I can start adding items to this folder. There's a couple ways to add an item to a folder. The easiest way is just drag and drop. I can just select anywhere on this row for this call of duty dot doc document. Click and drag. You can see it says I'm moving it and I can drop it right inside of test folder. Immediately it says that it's now in the test folder and if I click on test folder there it is. Now let me show you a little trick here. Now I can go back to my activity list. I've got this call of duty dot doc file stored away in a folder. I know how to easily access it whenever I want to see this file. So now I can right click and I can say don't show an activity list. Yet I can click on my test folder and there it is. Additionally I could again go up here and search and find the file as well. You know when I start using Google Drive I set up a whole bunch of folders uh, depending on which account I'm talking about here. I probably have at least 20 folders in all of my accounts. However when it comes down to it do I really use those folders that much? I don't. I search. I, the search is so powerful nowadays it's so asynchronous that it's quicker for me to search for a file than it is for me to go to a folder. And the search here in Google Docs does not just search the name of the file, it actually searches the content within a file, the text within a file. So it's a very powerful search feature. But that's how you can create a folder. So now I've got this test folder. Now let's say I wanted to share this test folder with somebody. Just like sharing a file, I could right click on it, and I could go to share, click on share again, like we did in an earlier video in this series, and then I could share it with everybody who needs to have access. So you can share folders just like you can documents. Okay, now there's one more aspect, the last aspect of kind of file organization and management that I'd like to talk about in Google Drive, and that is, is what happens when somebody else shares a folder with you. In the old version of Google Docs, that folder would show up right down here in Shared With Me, or actually it used to be called Shared Collections. Unfortunately, with the new changes Google made, shared folders aren't that evident anymore, and it really bothers me, but that's why I want to show you how you can add that to this My Drive section, how you can add a shared folder to the My Drive section over here on the left so you can have easy access. 
So there's a couple ways to do that. First of all, we saw earlier that when a folder is shared with you, it still shows up, I'm just gonna dismiss this, in the all items section. So here's my shared for test folder shared by Anson Alexander. Okay, that's nice. I, I can see the item in my all items, but how will I know that that item is there unless I go and I look for it, okay? Well, when somebody shares a folder with you, generally they send an email. And if I go ahead and I look at my email, you'll see my last one was an email from Anson Alexander. And if I open it up, it says I've shared an item with you. The easiest way to handle shared folders in Google Drive, in my opinion, is to go ahead and open up this email and then click on the folder that the user shared with you. It's going to open up kind of a different view of the folder. This is still in Google Drive. There's nothing in this folder or else the contents would be listed here. Okay. However, from this screen, I can easily add this folder to the My Drive section in Google Drive. All I have to do is click on this folder icon right to the right of it. And it used to be automatic and I wish it was, but it's not anymore. And then just to the left of My Drive, I can click the checkbox or I could click the checkbox to the left of folder shared with me. Oh, I'm sorry, it's actually gonna, um, it's gonna show up there automatically. So I, I always hit the checkbox next to my drive anyway. So hit the checkbox next to my drive and go ahead and hit move. And now we can just close this out. That doesn't really matter anymore. If we go back to our Google Drive and we look on the left, we now have the folder called shared for test listed in the my drive section and that's the folder that was shared with me so now every time I access my Google Drive that folder will appear on the left instead of me having to go to my all items to see that if I click on shared with me you can see as I mentioned a second ago that folder automatically appears there now so that's the easiest way to handle somebody else sharing a folder with you how you can have easy access to it every time you open up Google Drive um, so just kind of in closing here I would definitely make sure you keep your activity list cleaned up. Remember, you can always search for items. When in doubt, search, search, search. It's super powerful. Um, go ahead and create some folders. Shared folders work great. I mentioned this in the sharing video earlier in this series. Instead of, if you have 100 documents to share with one person, don't go ahead and, and add each of those documents individually. Share each one individually. Don't do that. Create a shared folder. Share that folder with the, that person. Then just hit the checkbox next to all the documents you want to share and drag them all in the shared folder all of a sudden, all at once, those folder, those files will inherit the permissions of your shared folder, so you don't have to do each one individually. Um, so I hope it helps. I'd love to hear some feedback in the comments section here on YouTube or on AntonAlex.com. I've got a ton more great content coming up for you here in 2013. If this was helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up on the video, and if you want to see more technology tutorials and tips, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all for I have for you today. This is Anson from AntonAlex.com.